Okay, welcome back to the channel guys. In this video, we'll be talking about I finally balanced my nutrients, okay? My phosphates and nitrates are now in the sweet spot and they've been in the sweet spot for a couple of weeks now. And you can see the difference in the corals and the pollock extension and the whole tank in general. You can just see difference with the algae and things like that. I'm scraping the glass a lot less than I was doing um, when my nitrates and phosphates were sky high. My actual phosphate got up to 0.3 and the last sort of maybe two to three weeks now I've got it down and in this video I'll show you exactly what I've done and I'll go through my um, parameters with you so you can see exactly what they are now and I've been testing for a couple of weeks now and they're sitting stable so I think I finally managed to get my system balanced again and the tank is just taking off and looking amazing so I'm going to share um, that with you so sit back and enjoy the video the first thing that i need to do to balance my nutrients is to test regularly and i test every week i use salifert test kits and i also back it up with an icp test here is my nitrate and phosphate test for the week i can just see by eye that the color is a lot less than it was on the previous weeks same with the phosphate the phosphate is nearly undetectable by the eye. I've put the phosphate down at 0.1 and my nitrate at 10, but it could be a bit less than that. As the color chart is quite hard to read on the Celefic test kits, but I can just see that they're a lot less than what they were a few weeks ago. On my ICP test, the phosphate was at 0.3 and my nitrates were at 20. Now you've tested and know where you are with the nitrates and phosphates, you can up it or lower it using these tools. If you're slightly low on phosphates and nitrates, that's the easy part. You can basically just buy some more fish or feed better or even feed the corals and your phosphates and nitrates will start climbing. But if it's the other way around and you've got high phosphates and nitrates, then you can use these tools to reduce them both but we're looking at one phosphate to 100 nitrates. And my sort of sweet spot is 0.1 in phosphates and 10 nitrates. I found over the years that's the best place for my corals to grow. As I have quite an open aquascape, only using dry rock and a few bits of live rock, I've had to use some more bio balls in the sump to reduce some of the nitrates, but I've also brought some miracle mud I used to use this back in the day, and this really helps um, lower my nitrates, especially because I don't have any sand. I can get some real nice bacteria growth. Okay, let's have a dive down into the sump and have a look how I put my Miracle Mud into my system. I put it in a glass container and it's quite deep. So in there we have some nice um, nitrifying bacteria. Because I don't have the big pieces of live rock, I was definitely deficient in the anaerobic bacteria and I think this is definitely helping. Also with the bio balls and the media bricks, this is all helping me get on top of my nitrates. The good thing about this is it shouldn't fluctuate now my nitrates are low, they should stay low. I don't like dosing no pox or any sort of carbon dosing just because it instantly just feeds the wrong bacteria and instantly get cyanobacteria when I use products like that whereas this isn't carbon dosing I'm also using a sponge and a bit of filter floss in the last baffle just to polish the water a bit more before it goes up into the main system I've gone old school this is geophode so this is phosphate remover and I've put it in my reactor and I used to use this quite a lot it's not trending at the moment because it takes out too much of the um, trace elements in the water and things like that but it really does reduce phosphates. And I think that's more important than if it's taken out some trace elements. As getting the basics right is more important than the minor trace elements. I'm definitely gonna continue using the GFO in the reactor. I might reduce the quantity of the GFO that I'm using, but I'm gonna continue to use it for now. Also the flow has helped as well, the ocean sea wave and the two MP40s. There's no detritus settling down on the glass at the moment. 
it's all going over the overflow and into the roller filter. I'm also dosing a liquid phosphate remover to reduce phosphates and that's going straight into the skimmer or the overflow and I'm just putting one mil a day in and that's definitely helping reduce my phosphates and this is the bit that I can use if I'm testing and the phosphates are slightly going up then I can just add a little bit more or if it's going the other way I can just reduce this a little bit so I can use this for fine tuning the phosphate Okay, water changes. I'm a big fan of water changes. I've always done water changes. This depends on the quality of the water that you're putting back in the fish tank. If you're using zero TDS and you're using a really good high quality salt, then water changes can only be good. But if you're using a sort of more poorer quality salt or um, questionable water coming in, then your water changes might be doing more harm and that's what you've got to look at. You've got to try and get the best quality water that you can. This is quite a small water change. I only do about 5 to 10% a week. This was a much faster water change. I didn't feel the need to siphon out any detritus as there was none on the bottom of the glass. I'm also using the coral snow and I use this after I've done the water change, after I've stirred up the tank a little bit. I also blow um, the rocks as well and then I'll put this coral snow into the tank and you can see how good the flow is in my tank when this instantly hits the water it's all over the tank I normally do this in the evening before the lights are going off I use this about once a week and afterwards the water looks crystal clear and that's everything that I'm using to reduce my phosphates and nitrates to keep it more balanced. Okay, there's plenty of tools to reduce. You can use a refugium, and um, the protein skimmer obviously helps a lot, and algae scrubber works. Okay, regular maintenance that I do just to keep my nutrients under control. I'm going to quickly show you the corals, and you can see some of the new growth that I'm getting on my SPS. This one at the front, you can see there's a lot of new shoots on that one there. And the fox flame, there are lots of new shoots on the back there. You can see on the bottom, the base, all the yellow dots coming up. That's all new shoots on the fox flame. I'm really happy that's um, taken off and growing. So that's a really nice coral, that one. It's very similar to the golden jaw dropper next to it as well. And they're going to look amazing growing together. And with the Pikachu at the front. You can see some of the new growth on this red one here. I just zoom in a little bit and this was just encrusted on the plug and now it's starting to grow which is really good but even on the strawberry shortcake you can see the new growth see the lighter ones at the bottom this is all new growth and this has just come up in the last couple of weeks and also with the color you can see the difference there you see the green on the bottom that's all the new growth on the strawberry shortcake and same on the golden jaw dropper as well. There's a lot of extra growth around the edges. I'm constantly fragging these corals as well. And this, the rainbow loom, is huge now. It's getting really big. I've definitely seen some improvements in my corals since reducing my phosphates and nitrates, especially in the growth. And I was shocked into action when I saw my ICP and it said 0.3 for phosphates. I knew I had to start reducing them. Now my nutrients are balanced. It's definitely helping with the nasty algae, especially the stuff that was on the back wall. That's a lot less this week. And also my cyanobacteria has just naturally gone away with the balanced nutrients. And that's it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.